Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. Hello. In a few days' time, we will experience the Sunday of the Transfiguration, this year, February the 11th. The Transfiguration of the Lord was a significant event in the ministry of Christ. Toward the end of his ministry, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up onto a high mountain. The account of the Transfiguration is found in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as well as an account in Second Peter. The mountain has been traditionally identified as Mount Tabor, a rather small mountain in Galilee not far from Nazareth, and there the Chapel of the Transfiguration is to be found. In more recent years, many have identified the mountain with Mount Hermon, the tallest mountain in the Middle East to the north of Israel in what is Lebanon, and certainly that would be defined as a high mountain. Let us read the account in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, as they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. In Second Peter, the first chapter, we read this account. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we were told about your coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but were eyewitnesses to his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven, and we were with him on the sacred mountain. Christopher Smart was a poet, an English language poet, who lived from 1722 until 1771. Like many artists, he spent a great deal of his life in debtor's prison and also in an asylum for the insane, but he wrote a very compelling poem about the Transfiguration. Here are a few words from it. Christ Jesus on a certain day upon the mountain went to pray commanding Peter to be there, and John and James to join in prayer, when, lo, the fashion in his face was altered through exceeding grace, and all his garments glistening white far outshone the morning light, and, lo, two men talked with them there, which Moses and Elijah were, who came in glory from their peace, and spoke to him of his decrease." cloud descended overhead and covered them, as this he said, and now their hearts began to quake, as in the cloud they entrance make, and from the cloud a voice there break, which thus the trembling saints bespoke, This is my beloved Son, attend that his commands be done. The Transfiguration has been discussed many times, and there are many paintings and icons and representations of the Transfiguration that have been done in churches all over the world. Most of the discussions center around the metamorphosis of Jesus that took place as his face glistened like the sun, as his garments become whiter than white. The appearance of Moses and Elijah, Moses representing the law, often depicted holding the commandments, and Elijah representing the prophets, those who declare forth the word of God, and Peter's idea to build booths. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but it is the words of God the Father that we need to pay the most attention to. He says, this Jesus is my beloved son, the anointed one, the Messiah. 
and an imperative is given, listen to him, be attentive to his words, or as Smart says in his poem, attend that his commands be done. Jesus is the Savior. Now, many ideas have come forth, some of them heretical, many theologies have come forth about who Jesus is. We have the creeds, the Nicene Creed, and other creeds that articulate clearly that Jesus is Lord. We've had the Christological controversies in the Christian Church in the early centuries and those things that continue to this day. Clearly, we need to recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior, the Anointed One, the Beloved Son of God. The Father says that. But then we also need to listen to the words that Jesus said. Listen to him. How well have we listened to the words of Jesus? There are many things that have superseded the words of Jesus in the lives of Christians. Even in the church, economics, politics, kings, emperors, concepts of democracy, presidents and rulers, ideologies, theologies that assign the words of Jesus to a future age, saying that they're not really relevant for us now. Cults of personality, all of these things, and a great variety of them have come forth. What the transfiguration tells us, one, we see the glory of God clearly revealed in the garments of Jesus and in his face. We see the truth of Jesus. He is the Son of God, the Anointed One, the Messiah. This is my beloved Son. And then we have the words of the Father. Listen, obey. Pay attention to what he taught you. Pay attention to what he said. Now, we say Jesus is Lord, but sometimes we find ways to rationalize around that, to ignore it, to even reject it. And the words of Jesus, when they are not followed, we have the scene at the bottom of the mountain. Now, I did not read that as part of the scripture, but in a few of the paintings that have been done of the Transfiguration, particularly by Raphael and by Rubens, we see the scene at the bottom of the mountain with the other disciples as they attempt to solve a serious problem that is brought to them in the absence of Jesus, in the absence of Jesus and not relying upon his words and not relying upon who he is. There is utter chaos, there is confusion, and there is failure. On the Mount of the Transfiguration, God the Father spoke with clarity. Let us respond with faith, because if we do not, we find ourselves in a chaotic situation, and that is often where we are. We could say that that is where we are in the world today. To some degree, we could say that is where we are in the church today, as a church attendance has declined, as the membership in many churches has fallen off. Perhaps what we need to do, the declaration that Jesus is Lord and the recognition of the importance of his words of listening to him. The Feast of the Transfiguration is a few days before us. May the Lord's light of love, peace, and goodness be upon us as we come to this day. Let us pray. Our God, on the holy mountain you reveal to your chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, transfigured in raiment white and glistening. Mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may in faith behold the Savior in his beauty, who with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to visit our church website at cpctoranum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Tarenum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.